For all of you who listen to Submersion and own an Android device, go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I personally use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcast I want to listen to, select it as a favorite, and have it just a click away. Make sure you select Submersion as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes every Thursday. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. Episode 144. Woo! There we go. We had to have... Could anybody tell? That was that was like a spot-on impression. Was it good? Impersonation. Impression of who? Damn good. Jamie. Why? Rest in You're peace. You're saying Jamie's not here? He died. Jamie's no longer with us. Uh, I thought it was going to be that Always Sunny sound clip. I can't. I couldn't find it. Ah, that's all right. Oh man, Some we gave him like ten seconds to find enough. that clip. Not bad. Uh, off we topic, got that. but good. I'm back in yeah. the saddle. Ben is back. You ladies are, man. and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Got to do your wave. Do your wave, and uh, people don't see the video anymore. So that was <laughs> no, 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 no poor podcast. Well, we're gonna. We're going to get some things figured out and then maybe get the video back online later. Maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. We'll figure that out. But you are back, man. You've been out there doing great things. We mentioned it a little bit at the beginning of last episode. Oh, did you? You're now, yeah, you're now, you consider yourself head cuck? Or what do you What do you call yourself? Uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm more just founder and CEO of Beta Cuck Investments. Uh, but we've been throwing all sorts of terms out there for for different members like Top Cuck and Alpha Cuck. But uh, yeah, it's very it's very Cuck themed for all those <laughs> yeah. for all those cuckolds out there. Uh, but uh, we of course are talking about my stream, <laughs> my Twitch streaming channel, uh, Twitch TV slash Brahmatron. But you can tune into our program Wednesday nights at nine p.m. Eastern. Beta Cuck Investments. We we crack open uh, collectibles. We we bust into uh, Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and sports cards. Got sports coming up here, um, and uh, we've been having a good time. The guys have been loving it. I I mainly wanted to be able to archive you know some box openings of some really expensive products that I've been opening. Uh, and then it really caught on. People really enjoyed it. My, the very first thing we did was uh, unboxing my PSA uh, submission uh, of graded Pokemon cards, my childhood collection from the 90s, and we had a big big turnout and fanfare. People really enjoyed it, and that really caught steam. So here we are. We've been doing it for a few months now, and what, like 25 subscribers mm-hmm. and been getting good viewership and having a blast. So check it's, us out. It is great. And don't forget that pre-show hype show, 8.30. There's a pre-show hype show by yours truly, your, your man, not yours truly, but your man, Saturday Zach Live over there. Whoop, whoop. Uh, so it, it's been a fun, It's it's we, we've been rolling out the red carpet and uh, we, everyone's there. You can join Knuckle Clown. Sometimes, uh, sometimes Kyle here is logged in on multiple accounts. Dude, <laughs> talking to myself sometimes. I, what did you say last time? You're like, are you talking to yourself on two accounts? <laughs> <laughs> like who does that? Nobody would do that. You and you have. Um, have you been entering the giveaways with both accounts? No, okay, I have. I'm not that shady. Although, <laughs> although I should, I should because like, what the hell, man? The, every week he says this guy does a giveaway. So I mean, if you're watching, you might not even have a seat at the table. Um, you could. People could direct message you right if they want to get a seat at the table. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but if you don't, you can still go and like win a free pack. Yeah, well, we've been actually, we've, we've he been says it's not rigged. Pretty... He says it's not rigged, but one guy wins like all the time, every week, all the time, well, every week. Like, what the hell? Zach's probably won the second most, but yeah, yeah the Shroy, the Shroy has won the most. Uh, but yeah, we've been giving away a lot. Actually, I mean, it's 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 pretty impressive stuff. Like I gave away uh, about thirty or forty dollars worth of cards this past week uh, to different people. Uh, we didn't open anything good, but we cracked the packs and we're looking for something good, you know, something spicy to get excited we, about. But uh, we're looking for a, these, right? The Charizard. That's the Charizard, the Charizard cry <gasps> from uh, the Pokemon games. Dude, I was I was working in my head because I was making some like intro music for something, and I was thinking of words to say for yours, and I 
Dude, cracking packs, making stacks, just <laughs> beta cuck investments, baby. That's good. Let's go. Cracking pack. Yeah, that, that would go, go like good that. on a t-shirt. I know, man. So, no, I, I, I said this last week, or what, and we won't, we don't have to go on about this forever. People are not everybody's a beta cuck. Most of you probably are. You don't even realize it, but. Uh, I didn't, when you first talked to me about it, I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. Like, you're like, do you want to, do you want to be in? And I was like, sure, whatever. I'll be in. Cause I love you. What, you know, I'll do this. And then when I finally got an opportunity to watch it, I was like, this is damn good content. Like <laughs> I had an absolute blast from, I think it was on, I don't know what I was doing, where I was driving to. I think it was like Zach's bachelor party. Probably. I think that's when I got to watch the first one. So it had been a few mm-hmm. and, uh, I don't know that pre-show hype show, and then it fed right into it, and I was just like, "My God, dude, this, it was a good time." Yeah, so. Zach's been doing a great job with the pre-show hype show, but it, it's been so much fun. Oh, thanks, and I, I, I say it all the time on the on the stream that it's really fulfilling for me as a designer producing the content because I've been working on the overlays and background and the the production quality of it and fitting time they in here good. and there to work on it, and it's it's been really fun, kind of making my own little TV show for for Wednesday nights. So it's, it's awesome. And I appreciate that you're, that you're enjoying it and you guys have been turning out to, to support it. But uh, yeah, anyone else out there listening wants to have something to watch and, and jump down the rabbit hole of collectibles, uh, check us out again, twitch.tv slash Brahmatron Wednesdays, 9 PM Eastern. And uh, thank you for the, the shout out here on the show to, to lead us off. Dude. No problem. You and you spell Brahmatron exactly like you would imagine. It is very um, what's what's the word? Is it phonetic? Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, we can, dude. It's been it's awesome. It's I highly recommend anybody check it out. It, it is a good time. I've got something here, a little submarine related tonight that I found at the store. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. Kyle what is, is it, about Kyle? to show. Uh, Kyle is showing a submarinos. That's cool. Submarino. Submarinos. Yeah, that's Strawberry Cremet filled snack. Okay. Sorry. Yep. There you filled go. Snack Strawberry cakes. cream filled snack cakes. They, Are you guys having to read? Th- is that backwards to you guys? No. no it just has Mar- oh, Marinara God. brand. It's just yeah, not pleasant to see look what they look like, man. They look like Twinkies. little Twinkies. Strawberry. I'm going to do a taste test right now. We're going to see how this tastes. Ooh. Okay. It's probably well, like 400 on. calories, Kyle. <laughs> it's like half your caloric intake in that one bite he's eating we are watching him eat you can't he's eating it uh he's, oh, not, here, he's not making a, a, a he, pleasurable face I'll he's say got that. He, no he's all got, right <laughs> all right i didn't make that face all right this it tastes exactly what you would think man it just it's just like a twinkie with some strawberry if like replace the cream filling in a twinkie put it like strawberry submarino cool but that's yeah, I'm, check them is out. Is it cool though? I don't know. Check them out. Yeah, we we gave you guys two things to check out here today. <laughs> One is um, Marinella, who I don't know anyone who works there, but whatever, man. I, I've never get even those, heard of get them. Get those guys some love. No knockoff, little Debbie Folks. <laughs> dive, 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 dive. <laughs> What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, the artist formerly known as Brahm, Jamie the Ointment, Kyle El Capitan, and the gruesome twosome present Submersion. Wonderful. All right. That is probably our smoothest transition that we have ever had <laughs> on show. Yet. Best one yet. Um, I wasn't ready to dive this in. in. You weren't, dude. Hatches were open, and Jamie, rest in peace, he stayed up top to get the door closed. Oh we told him he God. could have come he in, died again. but he didn't. He died again, man. They got him. All right. I, I, been dying to know, I didn't but, want to dive yet. I wanted to ask Zach about uh, the pay-per-view event last night. Zach doesn't seem enthused to talk about it. So I can't. Are we talking about it? 
Pay per view yeah, was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it was a great pay per view last night. It was the first fully uh, full attendance wrestling event they've had since co- since pre COVID. Oh, so it was a huge pay per view. Matches were on point. Um, what are we talking about? First of all, tell the crowd here. WWE pay per view, uh, Money in the Bank last night was their uh, their big pay per view. This is uh, so they have the female matches, the male matches. Um, where ladder of, matches, la- there are ladder matches, but the whole goal is is that if you get the Money in the Bank box, then you get to cash that in at some point to your choosing. Usually, like during a title match, and you can like run in, cash it in, and then get in the fight. And more often than not, the person usually wins the championship at some point. But then there's the big title fight. The women's Raw title is on the line, and then the men's uh, heavyweight title is on the line. We have a new women's champion, Charlotte Flair won, and that was probably my favorite match of the night was a women's match. It was freaking intense. And then the men's match, uh, Edge against Roman Reigns, um, Edge lost, but it was a really good hard-fought match. But what what was great was at the end, um, John Cena busted out at the end right before uh, the end of the pay-per-view, and John Cena's back. It's going to lead right up to SummerSlam next month's pay-per-view. And you know Whoa. there's going to be a match against Roman Reigns and John Cena. And it's going to be off the hook. So it was a great pay-per-view last night. Thoroughly enjoyed it. That's, that is awesome. I didn't hear about that. That's cool. Yeah, John Cena showed up freaking doing his thing. Got his jean shorts on. And it was awesome. <laughs> like old school many, John Cena. Uh, <laughs> how many uh, pay-per-views do they do per year? One a month. So there's 12, okay. 12, 12 in a year. Yep. Oh, Wow, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, they've always do. Well, like I feel one, like this one like pay per view. Like, I feel like this was one to watch. I mean, like this will be like a probably one of the bigger ones of you know the year if if John Cena showed up. I mean, that's got to oh, be yeah. pretty historic. Yeah, that it was it was great. The fans were just going wild, especially oh, when his I, music dropped. Because be I mean, he doesn't. If I were you, I'm sure. I mean, he's like The Rock now, right? He makes movies, right? Like that's what he yeah. does. So this was a huge, huge appearance. Um, yeah, it's I just got turned on to that video of him uh, announcing the the death of Osama bin Laden, and uh, have absolutely <laughs> loved that video. I can't believe I went this long in my life without watching that. Wait, John <laughs> Cena announces that? Oh yeah, and it's a it, it, it's amazing. You got to check it out after we get off this. Right. But yeah. he he's like uh, he comes out to the crowd because I, I don't I don't I can't remember what time of day that occurred. Uh, but he comes out to the crowd and got the the american flags are waving and everything and everyone's like wondering what the hell's going on and it's just john Cena up there and he goes he starts talking about the troops and how much he appreciates them and he's like we have caught and we have compromised to a permanent end osama bin laden and the crowd just starts going nuts <laughs> chanting usa 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 yeah. and it pans around the crowd there's like a father and son and the father's like are you kidding me and he's like high five and his son and they're like fist pumping and everything it's the funniest thing in the world my god <laughs> and he like he drops the mic and like walks out and just starts high fiving everybody as he leaves the <laughs> arena <laughs> celebrating the death of somebody it's just really wild even though it's and, like one and of the like most he had any part ever. in any of no <laughs> <laughs> And wow. they start playing uh, like was it was a hail to the chief or whatnot. It's, it's so good. It's so good. It's it's the most that. American. It sounds thing pretty ever. incredible. Yeah, it's the most American thing. You ever. need to see it, Kyle. I hope they played That's it crazy. for Al Qaeda. <laughs> My God, they probably did. Uh, all right. <laughs> Anyways, we're in fifteen minutes. <laughs> we are we serious? The, the recap's going to be like lightning. Quick. Oh my God! Yeah, we've we've lost. This is great. like the this longest. Has been fun. I mean, yeah, we haven't had a good time. Uh, so, anyways, we're here for a movie tonight, or that's the lie that we told ourselves. Um, but we're here, we're here regardless. Don't give me that look, Zach. What Whatever do you mean? We is. did watch a movie. In fact, what eyes. was the movie we watched, Kyle? You never get to say it. We wa- That's very true. Thank you. We got to watch the 2020 underwater science fiction movie starring. Kristen Stewart called Underwater. Yes. Also starring Vincent Castle. Yep. Mamadou Athi. I'm sure I butchered that. TJ Miller, John Gallagher, and Jessica Henwick. Directed by Directed. William Eubank. Those people are literally the, the only screen. people in the movie. William Eubank. Yeah, it, I mean it is a it is a small cast just based on Everything that goes on in the movie. Vincent um, Castle, I was sure when I saw him and knowing that he was a French actor, I was like, man, that guy had to have been in uh, The Wolf's Call, right? Well, he wasn't. 
I was thinking. Really? I was thinking we had a, a veteran, a submarine veteran on the on this movie, but we did not. You would oh, recognize him gosh. as the bad guy from uh, Black Swan, though. It's been a long time since I've seen that one. Um, but yeah, the uh, underwater sci-fi disaster movie. Mm-hmm. And should we just get in? I mean, jump into when it. I say Kyle. just get into it. I mean, dude, we have been we've been going along. Jamie is no longer with us tonight. He will be back later after we resurrect him. And uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna give my attempt at Jamie's hot five. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how this goes. Maybe we all should. Right? Maybe we should yeah. all do top fi- hot fives. <laughs> oh, and see who's this the best. And we rate. Then we rate the ratings. Rate the what's, a hot, what's a hot five? Is this new? This is new. This is the recap in five minutes. This is the oh, goal okay. to shrink episodes. We are doing hot five summaries. I think it's, isn't it hot tens, <laughs> but I, maybe hot five. Well, Jamie did a hot 10 because we said five and then we've been trying to, you know, shorten the length, but then we have gone on for 15 minutes ahead of time before we even get it. true. We're pushing <laughs> 20 now. So, <laughs> oh my God. This is good. Okay. This is podcasting though. <laughs> This right. is podcasting. Nobody wants true. to All listen right. to a forty-minute recap of a one and a half-hour movie. So, all right, Hot well, five. get ready for this. Hot get ready five. for this. You doing the timer, Kyle? You need us to do the timer. I oh yeah, hold on. I want you guys to count me down. I've got a timer right you here that I will definitely okay. check. I'll count you down. I'll count you down. All right, sixty, fifty-nine, fifty-eight. <laughs> Where do you want me to start at? Five. <laughs> sure, okay. man. Five. Do five. Do four. Five to five. Three. Two. One, go. <laughs> all right, great. I got to go out on the parts. So anyway, we open up in an underwater base, and we're getting all kinds of narration about things that, oh, man, is life going the way I want it with Kristen Stewart? And she is brushing her teeth, looking into a mirror, and then literally we start wasting no time. All of a sudden, water drips from the ceiling. Boom! The walls blow out on the underwater base, and she is sprinting for her life to get to literally anywhere that she might be able to seal off and just save the entire rig from going under. Well, guess what? She gets there, and then one of her buddies, who is uh, played by I can't remember his I can't pr- Mama, the guy I Mama can't Mama pronounce Doo. his name, Mama Do. Call him Rodrigo. That's his name in the movie. Uh, Kristen Stewart is Nora, so we'll just go with that. They get in there. And Kristen Stewart, you immediately see she knows her shit. She's a engineer. She's able to hack into this computer system because the doors are jammed, and she's able to close it. But guess what? They have to close it on a couple guys who die, ultimately. Oh, my God. Not good. Uh, Kristen Stewart loses her glasses early in the movie. Doesn't really seem to care or doesn't really seem to impact her at all. Maybe they were fashion glasses. Maybe they weren't. I don't really know. So anyway, they know that they have to get to a specific area within the underwater base so that hopefully they can get to escape pods. Well, guess what? We got a little bit of a threatening journey on the way to the escape pods because everything is blowing up and collapsing. So they go, and I'm already a minute and a half in. Holy shit. Um, They find TJ Miller. Just like underneath all this rock and stuff, and he is, looks fine. I don't know. He <laughs> unharmed. <laughs> they pull, they pull him out, and he's doing good. But he's got this little bunny rabbit. T.J. Miller's out there just cracking jokes, just doing all kinds of things. It might have to be a ten minute thing, man. I don't know. Um, so anyway, they go c- past a couple bodies. Seconds they get describing T.J. To- Miller. <laughs> yeah, just they get the inches to T.J. Miller. Kyle's for Thirty seconds. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm really trying. I, Jamie's a master at this, so I don't know. Um, and then I'm just, I'm just the co-pilot, um, quote unquote captain. Yeah, right. Uh, so, anyways, they finally get to the captain, and they're like, "Hey, buddy, hey, buddy, let us in." He's like, "Dude, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Like, you should, you should leave." And they're like, "Well, what about you, man? You should have taken the escape pods." Captain goes down with the ship. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And so now they're like, "All right, guess what? I found some other people. I don't really remember where they came from, but they've got them now. So now we got a group of six people, and they're like, "All right." You know what we have to do? We can't stay here because all these escape pods are gone. We have to go to another base. It's like a mile and a half away. And oh, by the way, did I mention? No, I didn't. That this is the deepest water base in the world. They're seven miles underwater, drilling into the Earth's core. Holy shit. What's going to happen with that? Maybe we'll find out. So now they have to walk in these suits that nobody's ever walked this far in. And you know what? They're probably going to implode. Well, you know what? Probably might be a bit of an understatement because some of them do implode. Um... Yeah, a guy was like, Rodrigo, he's the first to go, and because he puts on a compromised helmet, and he's, I mean, literally explodes, implodes, whatever, sorry, 
intense. Um, the intern or the research assistant, she is just freaking out. She's like, oh my God, this is not so good. And so all of a sudden they're like, you know what? Fuck that. You still got to go. She's like, okay, whatever. And so they take off and they're going and God, I've just lost where I'm at in the movie. I don't know how Jamie does this. I don't know how Jamie does this. He's so good. <laughs> Keep going. You're yeah, great. Get into, all right. Yeah. Am I? Okay. So yeah. anyways, they get in and they're, they're going in this like mine shaft thing down to the, down to the floor of the ocean and they have to stop because they might see some life forms. So they stop. They send TJ Miller. He's like, just cracking jokes left and right. <laughs> and everybody's T- like, come T. J. on, man. It's a little insensitive. As TJ Miller yeah. always does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if he had a serious thing that he ever said he, in the entire he movie. Did. He, every he, single he, thing he, he said was a witticism. It was horrible. He, he, yeah, that's what he does in every movie he's like ever been in, ever. <laughs> you guys are just literally just eating so much time into this. Like, I gave him a 30 second intro. Now we're probably put another 30 seconds on TJ Miller. So that's what you need to know. <laughs> Chris Stewart's in the movie, TJ Miller's in the movie. Um, <laughs> And so they find this life form and they're like, or this, this body, they're like, okay, well, this is a dead person, whatever. And all of a sudden, holy shit, this like alien things comes out. They blast the shit out of it. They throw it back in their thing. Not a good move. Never do that. Ever seen any movie ever? Don't do that. <laughs> like, just kill it. Leave it. Fuck it. Get out of there. But no, for science, uh, we got to know no. what this is. So... They get it, and then all of a sudden, something starts rocking the boat or the little mine shaft, and they're like, oh, I bet there was a baby. Uh, guess what? It probably was. Uh, so they get down to the bottom of the ocean, and some wires snap. Anyway, in this fantastical explosion and drop to the ocean floor. They shoot out of the thing just in time to be saved. Uh, but then there is now this humanoid-like thing down there with tentacle or something. I don't know. Uh, if you ever played Legend of Zelda, maybe it's a Zora. I don't know. For any of you who don't know what that is, sorry, I don't know a better analogy. Um, hey, there's God, I'm be sorry. Something. Sorry to interject. Uh, what, what, where are we at in the movie right now? <laughs> sorry, like, are we at the end or are we in the middle? No, we're like in the middle, man. Okay, I, I was gonna say because you haven't even said when T.J. Miller dies. Oops. I oh my God, I was just gonna get there. So, anyways, they like all of this debris and shit is just falling down because the base is just crumbling and everything, and I'm already over five minutes. And so they're going through these. They get into the base and they get safe. Although the thing is like standing up on the the doors, like ah, la, 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 la. and then uh, they were like, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> they get in underneath it. That's not a problem. So then they then they start going down these hallways because they're on their way to the base, and they have to go through this underwater passage, and it's really tight, and Kristen Stewart says, "I'm going to go first because I'm the smallest." And I was like, "Well, you guys are all in these like same size suits, so I don't really know that that matters." But anyway, I she thought did. the same thing. She, but she their made it suits through. Were different sized. Okay, well that's good. Yeah. Um. So they make it through, and they get this like line that they're pulling people through. T.J. Miller's the last one to go, and all of a sudden we see some creepy stuff coming up behind him. Um. He makes it through most of the way, and then you know he's kind of joking, but then all of a sudden he gets like sucked back in, and then. Everybody's like, oh my God, we got to save TJ Miller because he's our funny guy. And then all of a sudden, boom, he gets ripped from his suit, explodes, another person exploding. Holy shit. Um, now everybody's just really freaking the fuck out. Um, also, in the in the midst of all the debris falling, uh, one of our guys, Smith, he gets hit in the back and it ruins his O2 exchanger. So now he is really running low on air. But this guy has great lung capacity or something, man, as we will see later. Um, doesn't matter. You can drag that guy around for hours. He'll be fine. Uh, so anyways, now, now, <laughs> now where are we at? <laughs> we are at. Oh, my um, God. Uh, where are we at? What did oh. you just say? TJ okay, Miller died. Okay, all right. So. Yeah. Yeah, so then they're walking along the ocean floor yep. again because like we got to get to the Roebuck yep. station. They're like, okay, let's get to Roebuck. And I should have mentioned that earlier because everybody listening is like, what is Roebuck? Roebuck's the name of a station. So headed there. Then the monster confronts them head on, and like they think it t- steals Smith. The captain goes. He's like, I'm gonna save Smith. And he goes. He's like, I got to get my gun back after he pulls him out. And everybody's like, Don't worry about the gun. Like it's not gonna help at all. But he's like, I'm the captain. I'm going to do this. And he grabs the gun. <laughs> the monster grabs him. He's hooked to Nora. Boom. They're just like flying through the air. Take off. There's a little bit of a scuffle like on a platform. It doesn't really matter because they take off again. They're going what, way too fast. Pressure's changing. Captain's like, Nora, let go of me. 
I want you to die at the bottom of the ocean, not up here with me. And <laughs> she's like, please, let me just die here. And he's like, nope. He disconnects his glove. He implodes. Boom. Done. Um, probably an easier end for him, honestly. But uh, so anyway, she falls back to the ground. She now makes her way. She's completely concussed. The other two people are separated. She makes her way to another station, an old station, where you start to see some things about the past of our different crew members, some story development here that you're starting to get like, oh, some of these things are starting to add up and make sense. And she comes up with a plan. And then she starts heading to Roebuck because she's like, that's that's the answer. That's where I got to get. I got to get to Roebuck. So anyways, she starts heading to Roebuck. She finds the others. Um, and then all of a sudden, this becomes a just massive kaiju movie. Um, now, instead of just one monster, there are like millions of monsters. And then just one massive mega monster. Crazy big. Um, starts attacking them. And then they eventually make it into Roebuck after some like wild shit. Tensions are through the roof. And then it's time to leave. And then instead of leaving, Nora has to stay behind because there are only three. There are three escape pods. Only two are working. So the other two are in love. She sends them away. The one guy is so out of it because he hasn't had oxygen for like, I don't know, 45 minutes or something like that. And so he's like, I I, want to stay behind and I'll fix it. They're like, you literally can't. Like, what are you doing? Sends her up. And then Nora literally punches her friend in the face. I know. I was like, this is great. Um, <laughs> if you want everyone, somebody to do something, just punch them in the face. They'll probably <laughs> submit. Um, and then as, as the escape pods go, start to go away. All of a sudden you start to see the sonar with all these monsters just going up towards the escape pods. And then they like kind of like plateau for a really long time for whatever reason. And then they keep going. Then Nora's like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm setting off the nukes, killing myself. Boom. Movie done. That took 10 minutes. There, tape. Kyle's mediocre 10. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, and there was a lot of things where I'm like, I don't even know where we're at. And then I just had to look at my notes. I'm like, okay. Well. Kyle, you did fantastic. <sighs> um, you guys are just feeding into it. Jamie, I am. I didn't do you justice. I didn't know how, I didn't know how hard that actually was. That's very hard to do that. Holy shit. You did it though, man. Good job. I'm proud. I'm proud of you. Oh, man. It's wild. It's underwater. So, should we get into some reviews here? Let's jump We do have differing it. opinions. Let's jump into it. Just based on some earlier conversations. I'm going to go. I'll, I'll start this off. I'll start this off. Um, underwater. The movie. <laughs> underwater by William Eubank. My guy. Underwater. The movie. <laughs> that was underwater. <laughs> so I went into this one with real low expectations. Like I'm talking, I'm like, this is probably almost skippable. <laughs> I'll just pretend I watched it, but I actually didn't end up watching it. And I am happy I watched it because I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. This movie is right up Zach's alley of um what I find entertaining. And it was just like that sci-fi horror survival story where the crew all start to die. And there's usually one person that makes it out or saves the day. And I, I like that, you know, the kind of, that's like alien. It's uh, it had very, very, uh, Cloverfield style stuff going on. And Cloverfield is one of my favorite movies of all time. So I really liked, um, that style. Um, they were not lame horror scares. I really liked the cast. I thought everybody worked. T.J. Miller, right when he was getting annoying to me, died. So that worked really well. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, really, I, I think I was kind of talking to somebody else about this movie that they and they watched it too, and I was like, it left me with lots of questions, which is good because I really cared about the world, like the little sprinkles of the story, like the newspapers at the beginning, the newspapers at the end. The stuff with the TN and uh, TN industries. Why are they drilling down there? Oh, we got the big um, like H. What is it? HP Lovecraft style monster at the end. I can't think of what they're called, but it, there's a name for it. Um, Lovecraftian. Uh, yeah, but there's Cthulhu. a name for that. Sp- yeah, that specific monster. Yeah, so like that was really cool and surprising because I really thought the surprise were like the humanoid monsters that were going on after they found like that sea slug. <laughs> but really, it was the giant monster, which I thought looked great. 
I like that the movie was dark. I like that it was kind of hard to hear because it created, it was tense. <laughs> I think it created that atmosphere, like a tense atmosphere. Like my nerves were kind of going up and I liked it. That's why I think the CGI and the visual effects worked really well because it was just so dark that it was just, just, just enough. It was just enough to really like make me look there. And I'm like, you know what? If I wasn't watching Kyle's version of this, if this was like on 4K on a really great TV, I think it would look phenomenal. <laughs> and the sound. And they they don't have it on 4K. I know. And that's why I was like, if this was like top tier quality, I think I would really, really like it. Um, what was missing for me was I wish there was five or 10 more minutes at the beginning of the movie to just develop the characters more, like to get me to care about. Like once they're in those suits, and they start talking. I mean, you, I was like, all right, who's this person? Who's this person again? Well, I know that's Kristen Stewart, but who's talking? Why, why do I care about this person? Like you needed the 10 minutes of just them being down there, right? Showing well, them get that, along because they're all supposed to be friends. So like, I was like, okay, so could have used 10 more minutes and they could have, you know, they could have changed a few different things with the plot, gave you more of that story of what was going on, maybe just a little bit more. And I think it would have been like a fucking eight for me. Like it could have been a banger up there with Alien, but because of those few little like deficiencies that I kind of nitpicked, I'm giving it a 6.5. I really liked it. It was way better than I expected. It wasn't like sci-fi network shit. <laughs> it was a good movie. It was entertaining if that's your style of movie. Um, if you're not one for sci-fi or like those survival horrors like Alien, then you're not going to like this movie. But I liked it. I thought Kristen Stewart was great. I liked her hair. I thought she looked phenomenal. And I loved her <laughs> at the ending where she was looking up through like the glass when it was just like all going down. I thought that was just a great like hero shot at the end right before she sets it off. And then they just all start exploding. So I really liked it. 6.5 um, uh, cash money. Ooh, the cash money, Mad Skrilla. Zach Man, likes his Zach likes his ladies to have less hair than he does. That I do sometimes, <laughs> but it's actually yeah, no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm thinking of yeah. All right, I'm good. Uh, I was, that was a direct referendum on on your wife. <laughs> oh yes, my wife yeah, too. <laughs> got the buzz. I was sitting there thinking of different movie characters. I was like, oh yeah, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, Furiosa. I love her. So yeah. <laughs> But, okay. <laughs> oh, the woman I married. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah and my right, wife. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. All right, <laughs> someone take over. You want to go, bro? You want me to go? You 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 make the call here. You Ooh. gotta call these shots. This is your program. Man. All right, I can I can come in here. Um, I'm gonna echo some of what Zach says. So, I also came in with extremely low expectations because I was like. And honestly, I haven't seen Kristen Stewart in like really anything other than some like holiday rom com that came out last year or something. So that's that's really it. So I didn't. I knew she was in Twilight, and that's it. I really don't know much else about what she's done. I was surprised at how good she was. I thought she was great in her role. Um, T.J. Miller, as we said, he was just. Uh, just give me a little bit. Just give me a little bit of something, man. Because yeah. I think he could. I think he could do it. But he just doesn't. He just doesn't. Uh, but, I mean, as you said, Zach, right as you're getting to the point, you're like, all right, come on, man. Just, all right. Boop. Pull the pull the plug on him. Yep. Uh, visually great. I, I wore, like, big over-the-ear headphones watching this. And the sound was really good, I thought. But, again, I would really love to see this on 4K. Something I was slightly disappointed about, but I can't like factor that into necessarily like, my overall score of how the movie was itself, is that the DVD had no special features. And I think there's a lot of room here for special features because this is like a effects-driven film. And something I also liked is we wasted no time. Like, the walls burst, and you're like, holy shit. You can do the character development. I mean, maybe you can even do it like while they're traveling around or whatever. And as you talked about there, that guy Smith and then the research assistant, they were like, Oh, we're so in love. But that seemed to like happen, like flipping a light switch on. I don't even know where that came from. Presumably everybody knows each other beforehand, but I really like this movie. 
I thought it was a blast. If you like stuff like The Abyss or another great one, Leviathan, uh, which unfortunately doesn't have any kind of sub-action, this barely has literally any sub-action. Can't even really call it sub-action. We would probably most likely put this to a submersible pod because it's just an escape pod going through the air. But anyways, looks great, sounds great, acting's great, story's fun. I really liked it. This is my type of movie, and I know that's really hypocritical for me, right? Because I'm always talking about how I like the real stuff. But every once in a while, some of these like green screeny type things really get me. So I really enjoyed it. Had a blast watching it. And I'm going to come in at a... Okay. 725. 725. 725. Wow. All right. My turn to go. Um, as you said, the character development was non-existent i thought the acting was miserable i thought the writing was terrible uh an example of of the of the i mean they, they, there were so many tropes i was shocked by this uh, being a movie that came out in 2020 to have the black guy die first and then the funny guy who wasn't funny uh, T.J. Miller, as you guys said, was playing the same character he always does but literally every comment that came out of his mouth was was supposed to be witty it was like we were watching a sitcom where everything is a joke. Like there's no just like casual conversation or, or character building or anything or even just like, you know, narrative, like driving the plot. Like everything that came out of his mouth had to be a joke, even though like he nearly died. Oh, he nearly died here. Oh, he nearly died. They're about to die. They might die. And like somehow he's just still supposed to be just like saying these funny things like, no, this I didn't feel didn't feel realistic. Um, and honestly, he kind of drug the movie down for the first half there that he was alive because I, I wanted to feel suspense and intensity, but, uh, if TJ Miller's still rattling off clever little witty one-liners, like they must not be in that much danger. Right. Um, so he really drug the movie down and then just like some of the dialogue in general, like some of the self-introspection and stuff I thought really was really crummy and Kristen Stewart, as I, I said in the chat, you know, just kind of looking sheepish and brooding for, for two hours is kind of her shtick as well. That was on full display with this. But the, the one the one line that I was like, oh, my God, like there's so much derivative stuff, I mean, from Alien. Uh, uh, but also then uh, the line uh, by, I think it was Jessica Henwick's character, we drug the bottom of the ocean, but we took too much. Like that's just Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, it, it stunk. It stunk. It was a really, it was a really bad movie. Um, I, I, it, it fringes on watchable, like as a one time, just like if you want to watch it and just kind of complete your, your collection of, you know, seeing every horror movie ever made, like go for it. Cause it does feel like a, 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 a spot. Like it's unfortunately maybe the best of this so far of, of, of filling like the, the suspense thriller monster, uh, alien monster on the bottom of the ocean. Like the, it hasn't been done well yet and it still hasn't, but like, that's kind of what we were rooting for when we watched the abyss. I remember way back when we watched that, we were all hoping that it was going to be more of the horror movie and it wasn't. And this, this was the abyss like horror movie, but it just didn't have the suspense and, and intensity that, uh, it, that I was really hoping for or wanting. And like you said, the character development, just like not caring about these people didn't help. And the writing again shot it in the foot, but um, um, no sub action as well. We're a submarine podcast, and it was it was very it was a, a very tenuous connection to to submarine action having the the escape pods there at the very end uh, being really the only thing that we could could use to classify this uh, and 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 use this to watch on the podcast. Um, but yeah, I, I was let down. I was going in with better expectations, I'd say, than you guys. And then I guess it kind of under delivered for me. Um, I think I'm going to come in at a four. Wow. Production quality was Still there for the most part uh, in terms of, of CGI and visuals. But again, I just, I think a big missed opportunity because I love the Lovecraftian elements and uh 
the monsters looked looked fantastic and just uh ultimately uh unfulfilling watch for me if you if you want to see another one like this if you like this genre at all brahm i would leviathan. highly recommend leviathan okay. it's really good I but probably again, will there's check no it out. sub stuff. That's fine. It's uh, yeah. That's fine. I mean, because uh, it made me again think of uh, Alien in a lot of ways, um, and that didn't have submarine stuff. So I'm not just a submarine movie aficionado. Like I has to have submarines, but uh, if you're <laughs> oh. not going to have submarines and you're going to be on. this bad of a movie, like uh, it, it fell <laughs> short big time. Wow. Um, Jamie said for his review, he just wanted us to record his voice scene wrong and put it right after uh, Brahms. So. I think I think if Jamie hears what I said, though, and, and were to rewatch, I think Jamie would come to his senses here a little bit. Oh, I don't know, man. Ooh. Well, He seemed pretty excited. We, we've heard ours. We've got some, you know, some uh, disagreements, which I like. But let's hear what the internet had to say, guys. Let's, let's jump into love it, hate it. Yes. I love it. No. I hate it. Love it, hate <laughs> it. What do you guys want to hear first? Uh, pile it. on the hate, man. Pile oh, okay. Oh, the room is split. Oh, let's flip a coin. I've, I've got, got a coin right here. Lucky coin. I want, I want hate it to have the final word on this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. This movie has a 48 heads, on Metacritic, by the way. I'm not alone. That is, all right, that is very true. This movie is... Split down the middle. Crit critically Not panned. well reviewed by most. However, on RogerEbert.com... Roger Ebert has lost his say. way, man. They have other He's things to say. He's been dead for a He's long dead, time. He's dead, but that, that, <laughs> that, that, uh, that uh, site has definitely lost its way. I disagree with most yeah. of that shit anyways. <laughs> yeah, well... The scores. All right, man. All right. Who wants to call it? We got heads and tails. Oh, here. my you, God. You call it, Kyle. <laughs> no, Just he has it. to call it. He has to call it. Zach cringed as he's like, you you call it, Kyle. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to go with... Uh, I, I could lie to you guys. Um, tails is hate. Heads is love. Okay. Tails. What was it? It's tails. Tails. It's tails. So what was tails? Hate. Hates, what does that mean? It's first or last? First. Okay. It's first. <laughs> so hate it, right? Yeah. Okay. So was it that was that that hard? <laughs> I mean you could have just said hey, <laughs> give me the, the hate at first. <laughs> it's just it's just funny. Okay. All right. What's going on here? <laughs> this comes from my guy. Maybe he's not my guy if he hated it. This comes from Ben's guy, Booseman. Booseman. That's my March boy. March 27th, 2020. 40 million in the wind should be the title. Hell yeah, baby. Not every word written by man should be turned into a movie. 80 million budget? Come on. No way. By looking at my review history... You would think I would just stop watching movies. <laughs> By the look of it, eventually I will not have a choice. Good movies do not need my help to succeed, so there is no point to review them. Wasting this type of money on something like this film, though, should be a crime. That is why I review these carp movies. I think he meant crap. People should get fed up and start boycotting this drivel. I guarantee there are still good original scripts. There is a trend of corporations now being scarred to offend these trash and cave into these weird failure movies. Eventually, the money will dry up. Hopefully. One out of ten. Wow. Savage. Kind of. Some spelling errors. <laughs> Yeah, well, it wasn't the most articulate. I wish I had a, someone a little more articulate in my corner. <laughs> That's what you get, man. That's what you get. What's he his name again? He never Busima. Busaman. 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 But he he didn't Busaman. ever mention one really thing about like the plot of the movie or anything. No, uh, he just seemed more concerned about the money being spent. Yeah. I mean, eighty million is you know a decent chunk of change. Um, 
But whatever. I mean, that's not mine to spend. I'm not going to tell them how to do it. So <laughs> let's hate it. Now let's love it. This comes from oh. this comes from Sarah Curalex. Sarah Curalex, January eighth, twenty twenty. Impressive and unexpected cosmic horror. This took me by surprise. I awa- no, I will. Sorry, I have to cut it. Ben, how do you pronounce that Lovecraft monster's name? Cthulhu. 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 This took me by surprise. I awaited a Cthulhu film for God knows how long. Everything is impressive. Visuals, soundtrack, jump scares, atmosphere. The only glaring flaw, in my opinion, there are no characters. They are actors reading lines. There is zero development regarding that. Zero minutes of peace until chaos hits the fan. The movie already begins when bad stuff ensues. No 15 minutes of a happy crew like we usually get. Kristen's acting, which usually puts me off, was also fine here. We finally have a film that rivals the abyss. Mm. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, it seems Ooh. like the consensus is that like this and the abyss are really what we've got for, for that, which surprises me. I feel like this should be terrain that we've tread upon many times by this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's just... I'll say we're running out of know. time, too, on, on Cthulhu uh, if we want to see more Lovecraftian stuff, because I, I, I think he's something he's somebody that will be, like, canceled. Obviously, he's been dead for a century, but he's, like, I think notoriously racist. So, I mean, at, at some <laughs> point, we're probably going to stop being referential to his works in film, which will be unfortunate in some degree, because there's some really good, you know, creative writing there. Mm-hmm. The, the, the characters and monsters are... Mm-hmm. really creative and unique, mm-hmm. you know, beasts and monstrosities. But I'd say the days are numbered that we're going to see Lovecraftian films. Which also kind of leads to why I'm kind of disappointed with this movie. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. They blew it. You blew it. Blew it. <laughs> uh, any? Do you guys have any uh, trivia, I got trivia on this movie? I pulled up some quick yeah. trivia. I have a few, too. Okay, yeah. I, I just pulled up some IMDb trivia real quick, everybody. Um, just, just to say a few things. There's actually a lot of trivia on IMDb for this movie, if that's your thing. Which is, which is why I was so disappointed that there weren't, based on some of the trivia, why there wasn't behind the scenes on the I, DVD. I think, you know, there was definitely a lot of behind the scenes stuff about when this movie was made and then Disney's acquisition of uh, Fox media or whatever right yeah and then disney delaying this movie and then they dumped it in january and january is known as the worst month of the year to release movies so they released it on january intentionally like i don't think disney gave two shits about this movie so i feel like they didn't put any care effort into effort putting into you know any deluxe edition you know (laughs) with all these different features or or anything even the 4k i mean i doubt we'll even get a 4k 80 80 million dollar budget Mm -hmm. You're not going to put it on 4K. I, again, I mean, I think it, it can't be that much. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Disney gives a shit. It, this wasn't their baby. No, probably not. <laughs> um, so some real quick trivia. The one that, at least, the bit of trivia that I found really interesting were how much those suits weighed. Those suits were like 140 pounds, yeah. and they said they had to fill. Like there was multiple times when they would film, and it was just to get them moving. Like they didn't, weren't even speaking because it was so exhausting to a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, actors. So much, in fact, I want to say the one actor, uh, her name was was it Jessica Henwick? I think like yep. had to wear a neck brace. Like it legitimately really screwed her up some. Um, so the suits were really, uh, but I thought the suits looked badass for suits. I mean, they I looked, really did think they, they were looked cool. really good. But um, and I mean, but I mean, you can't tell me that like mm-hmm. Kristen Stewart or Jessica Henwick weigh anywhere even close to 140 pounds. They're both like rail thin. Yeah, I think they. I think literally, I think Jessica Henwick does weigh 140 on the dot. So it's like double. Okay. Like, yeah. You know, um, yeah, that's insane. Some of the other stuff that I found. Int- I mean, again, I'm just kind of. Looking through IMDb real quick. Um, I've got I've got a couple. Oh, you go uh, for you it. Said to, take it. Yeah, you said the, the about three year production. Well, not production, but by the time it was released, about three years had passed from when they first started filming. 
Uh, they wanted uh, Kristen Stewart to be barefoot through her opening run through the, uh, the, 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 the the water base there when she was trying to rouse everybody up to, uh, to escape when the water was flooding in. Uh, she was uh, totally down to go barefoot, but there were cons- concerns about her cutting or hurting her feet. Uh, so she was actually wearing footwear in that scene. If you if you uh, pay attention closely, uh, apparently you can see it. But they painted the the footwear pink uh, to make it still look like she was barefoot and complete the illusion. Hmm. The movie uh, magic man. Director William Eubank uh, confirmed in an interview that the sea monster scene in the movie is in fact Cthulhu of H.P. Lovecraft's mythos. Uh, the more humanoid, uh, lesser monsters are Shoggoths. Uh, another creature of Lovecraft demonology. Um, so mm. this was genuinely a Cthulhu film. And uh, a playing card, the Queen of Hearts, is visible at uh, 4 minute 30 second mark, uh, which is the film's first nod towards Alice in Wonderland. There's also a stuffed bunny rabbit and a Cheshire cat tattoo. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Did you guys see the one out... Uh when they were originally designing the sets, they first built them in virtual VR. reality. Yeah. I saw that one too. Yeah. That's so that cool. way they could like manipulate them and work with the lighting. I thought that was really cool. And I think that's not going to be the end of that. That's just, there's going to be a ton of that coming up. That's going to yeah. be really cool. I'd like to see what that little process looks like. Getting back to your special features and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I w- I'd be interested because that almost like when I read that, I'm like, nah, is that actually beneficial to them, or are they just kind of pissing money about being? Just well, but if you know, if you know ahead of time, you can say like, look at the way the set design looks. Like we're standing in it. This would be so cool. And yeah, I, I just kind um, of say I want to see that that applied. Like because I right, it's hard to imagine something like that. To build the movie yeah. virtually and then build it again. Uh, and another thing that I thought was pretty interesting is a lot of the underwater scenes, they said were shot on a dark stage and atmosphere, you know, smoke particles, whatever, were added around the actors and then they just let the flashlights kind of like go around and show where they're at. So I thought that was pretty interesting too. Again, something I would really like to see. Why'd you do this to us, Disney? Come on. Brom could have loved this movie. He could have been so into it. I don't know if the special features would have got me where I need to be, though. They they would have. You would have been like, wow. All right. Like, damn. oh, damn, that they were actually really Im- impressive yeah, on this you're movie. You're like, holy shit. You're like, dude, TJ Miller like studied this character for like four years before he took the role. Wow. And he was like a pathological, like, psycho that. Joke could only do nothing but joke. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, insane. All right. So I do have a little bit of something here. Unless you guys got any more trivia. Zach, you got any more? I got nothing. No. Well, wait, wait. I have one. Ooh. Kristen Stewart shaved her head for this movie. Whoa. There was (laughs) one there was one I read on IMDB that didn't make any sense to me. It said at no point. Do they show dry land, which I'm like, yeah, okay, of I, course, I, of course, of course. But <laughs> also, cares? they were never even on the seabed. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, they were like the, walking around on it all the time. Unless that was like like metal, like 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 like, like bridges or something that connects the different bases or whatnot. But I could have swore there was some seabed action in there, and they're like tunnels. Hundred percent. I question. Hundred percent, there's seabed action. I question yeah, like IMDb trivia. Aquatic <laughs> tunnels and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes vote it's it down. So stupid. All right. Yeah. But put that in yeah. the goof section of IMDb. <laughs> the trivia yeah. on this states this, but it's complete bullshit. <laughs> and then you just show a clip. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I've got I've got a little bit of submarine news here, and I want to try to keep this short. So I'm not going to do subs worldwide. Well, I got some sub news here for us, guys. Can you do the news? Clip? Um. We got the news. Uh, 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 we got. News! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, this article, pretty. <laughs> this article's a big tale. It's going to give it all away just in the title. So, um, 
Why don't I save that for a little bit? Uh, the U.S. has created a new force called Agron. Do you guys know what that's what that's that a, is? It's a Pokemon. Okay. No. Um, Zach, any guess? Agron? No. Right, Agron. I'm telling you, it's a Pokemon. It's like a Rhydon, uh, but a Steel type. I'm trying to. Listen, I don't even. How do you spell it? Listen to this guy. He knows. A G G. Now, if you spell it, you're going to find it. All right. So, it Agron. <laughs> Is yeah, it's a Pokemon. The, yeah, it's a rock steel Pokemon, right. Kyle. <laughs> All right, whatever. Next. Well, the U.S. has created created <laughs> this um, this rock steel Pokemon, Agron, and it is a Top Gun. That's a good for movie. The submarine force. So, like Top Gun's an actual program. I don't know if you guys knew that. It is. I just watched the movie. Hell of a program. Uh, so the article is called "The Navy Now Has a Top Gun for Submariners." Kind of popular by, mechanics. Um, <laughs> yeah, by Popular Mechanics. Kyle Mizukami, wow. July fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Is it Bottom Gun? Uh, no, Agron. <laughs> oh, damn it, Agron. Um, <laughs> it's a Pokemon. We've been over this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's oh, still okay. rock <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, we apologize to what we've done to you. Uh, so the article gives some actually really interesting stats on the creation of the Top Gun program itself. It's kind of like it kind of just lets you know that the U.S. made Agron and then went in to talk about Top Gun for whatever reason. Uh, but in the, the, the with the creation of Top Gun in the early days of the Vietnam War, U.S. Navy pilots were only shooting down. 2.42 fighters for each Navy fighter that went down. So, like a 2.4 kill death ratio. Not great. Uh, especially for like the US, like premier world Navy. So, they created the Top Gun program and put a bunch of people through it. And what these programs are designed to do is they have another pilot, somebody who's really familiar with your enemy or foreign countries or whatever, and their fighting tactics, they mimic what those people are known to do, those countries and whatever. Uh, and so after going through the training, the numbers went from 2.4 to 1 up to 12.5 to 1. Wow. Yeah, That's I mean, a hell of a huge, <laughs> a huge jump. Yeah, anybody would be happy with that. I'd be happy with 2.4, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's very true. Um, and so they've got people working on this, especially to mimic, um, you know, all the big rivals of the U.S., China and Russia. They're always button heads. Try so they got people figuring out how to work like them. And a lot of people criticize the U.S. for not having diesel electric submarines, but the U.S. is working with other countries that have them uh, to come on up and assist with the training. Uh, so July 1st, a Chilean submarine was actually seen in San Diego uh, to assist with some training. Uh, cool. And then I have one one more article here. And it's kind of cool. You can – so I watched the video. There's a video on the sub in San Diego Harbor. The video is like 30 minutes long. I don't know why. It's just like this camera watching the sub. But – um. There's like a yacht out there, and somebody's on a yacht, and all of a sudden the submarine just starts going by. I'd be like, "Wow, that'd be pretty sweet." But uh, anyways, what's this the next? Uh, what's the desired KDA for the the submarine bottom gun program? <sighs> Million to one. <laughs> That's freaking badass. What's the KDA yeah. for Agron the Pokemon? Uh, depends on the <laughs> opposing typing. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Agron, I mean, like, Agron Steel Rock Pokemon. I mean, two to one would be fantastic. <laughs> I mean, these guys are these shit eating grins here. Well, its strengths <laughs> its strength is dragon, <laughs> ice, psychic, fairy, bug, and rock. Its weaknesses is ground, fighting, and water. <laughs> yeah, it's like four times weakness, I think, to uh, ground. That Dang. sucks. Some some hardcore Agron talk here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should write the uh, United States. A letter. Just say, hey, guys. Agron's a Pokemon. Yeah. Why'd you do this? <laughs> I like that. The Pokemon company right. should uh, should sue us. Yeah, they probably I'd su- will. I'd support them. I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, so anyway, the next article I have here is from... 
I how much news you doing? Russian, Kyle? Prop, <laughs> Russian propaganda sites. Just one other article. You guys were all over Agron. This one will be really short. As long as there's no Pokemon references here, I don't know. Maybe there will be. Uh, this is from <laughs> July sixteenth. Was it called, was it called Kyle? Project Pikachu? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, it's called Squirtle Time. Uh, so this is from Tass.com. Tass Could not find an artic- or a, an author on it. Uh, I will post the link. But the uh, article is called Russian Navy Submarine Sneaks Through, quote, unquote, Enemy Minefield, end quote, in Black Sea Drills. So Russia is currently conducting drills in the Black Sea. And one of their diesel electric subs was able to effectively navigate a minefield in drills. Keep in mind, this was not an actual minefield, but a theoretical practice one. Um, so whatever that entails, they got they got through the imaginary minefield. Um, not to discredit them, I'm sure it's difficult. Uh, but they had a minesweeper up above them working, and just to just to check them out. So after succeeding in their mission, the sub dove and just started doing other drills. And I, where I got to the point where I think that this is a Russian propaganda site was that the article goes on to just like, just like talk about how great the Project 636 submarines are. It's the it's called the Black Hole because it's so quiet and it's considered the world's quietest submarine. This thing's so badass, and it's going to push Russia to greatness. At that point, I was like, all right, this right, I'm probably in some propaganda stuff. But that's all I got for the news. So, there, And there Agron's a Pokemon. There it is. There wow. It is. What's next? We got ourselves a little countdown. Do it. Countdown, it's countdown. Are you going to play it right now? Tube 3, ready to fire, sir. Commence the countdown. Give it to me. All right. Let's go. First countdown I had to make in a while. And uh, as we as we know here, we watched a movie from uh, 2020. Uh, and I've been watching a lot of movies. I've been ca- getting caught up. I wouldn't proclaim to be, you know, a, a movie buff or anything like that. But I've been trying to watch uh, more and more movies. There are just so many that people are like, "Are you kidding me? You haven't seen that yet?" I, like, finally watched The Godfather, and I'm I'm working on The Godfather Two right now. I mean, just so many other great movies, but a lot also from the past decade, uh, much like uh, much like Underwater. But whereas Underwater fell short. I'm going to share with you my 10 favorite movies from the past 10 years. Ben's favorites. All right. My favorites. But this is an authoritative list, so these this is, these are the correct answers. <laughs> so no room for <laughs> objections. Um, but here we go. I'll, I'll just come out with uh, – should I – now we'll save my honorable menchies until number one, I guess. Uh, number 10, I have to give a shout – to a Star Wars film because we've had so many that came out. Uh, so number ten, though, I'm giving to the best Star Wars film in the past ten years. It came out in 2016. I, of course, am talking about Rogue One. That's that is a good oh, answer. Man. It's a great answer. That's a good that movie. movie. I think it is the best. I, I honestly would go Solo as my second favorite from the past ten years from this oh, yeah. this Star Wars reboot. Yeah. That's that's another correct. Some answer. people hate solo, right? I know. <laughs> I know. I went in with low expectations on that one, talking about low that's expectations. Good. That that is one that way outperformed my yeah. expectations. Solo's not a bad movie. It was a good movie. I, yeah, I it like was a good it. movie. Well, especially with all the the fiasco with the production of the movie and switching directors well, and stuff. I also went in and I was like, oh, this is gonna Well, same with Rogue One. Really they had a, I mean, they added that ending Darth Vader scene. Like a month before the movie was released, they made that scene. That's crazy. Yeah. Thank God, because that scene was like kick ass. So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome movie. Yeah. Uh, number nine, I'm going to go with The Wolf of Wall Street from 2013. Oh, damn good, good movie. movie. Not our only Leo. finance movie on the list here. Uh, Say not your only finance not movie? Not my only one. Not my only one. Number eight. 
It's a horror movie from 2019. What is the name? It? Ari Aster. Oh. Midsommar. Midsommar. I don't know that one. I haven't seen. I've Florence, heard good Florence, things. Florence Pugh, or however you pronounce her name. It's a good one. It's about the the pug. Pug. Florence Pug. Uh, oh, I know this. It's about yeah, yeah, yeah. cover it's about art that okay. uh, little festival and that cult over in what was it? Was it Sweden? Somewhere over Scandinavia, somewhere something like that. But uh, yeah, great horror film. Uh, took a lot of twists and turns. Didn't know what to expect going in. Didn't know what ex- what to expect halfway through. Didn't know what to expect at the very end. It just really kept you guessing until the end result, and then you're like, ah, it makes sense. It's a good one. Very complete film. Number seven, though, the other finance film I like. Uh, I've watched it a couple times. It's always good. 2015, The Big Short. Oh, a lot of people like that oh, movie. Oh, yeah. A lot of it's great really actors in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love me some Christian Bale, Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. Sexy. It's a good one. Sexy Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. Number six, <laughs> uh, one, uh, first of two. First of two Christopher Nolan films. It's Dunkirk, 2017. That's great, a damn good movie. Great war film. Uh, I was. I will say probably 1917 might be able to make it on this list. I have not watched it yet. It's on my playlist. Oh, are you way, serious? It's way better than Dunkirk. I was. I have not watched it yet. I'm critical I've of Dunkirk. Obviously heard some great things. <laughs> 1917 is 1917 really good. awesome. Dunkirk was it just like it's one of those oh, that it needs a good keeps I feel you like, moving. Yeah, it needs a good. I need to be devoted and dedicated. I, I need to have the light. It's got to be at night. I got to have like all the lights. I kind of got to simulate that theater experience since I missed out on it. If you can watch with headphones, like do that, and like when you sit down, you're not able to stop. Right. Because that's what I'm saying. That that continuous shot. Right. You just have to be ready to roll. I need to dedicate an evening to it. Yeah, it's amazing. Number five. This one uh, of any movie on this list completely surprised me. I watched this one very recently, like a week ago, um, and loved it. I was expecting it to be conventional Hollywood drivel, especially with where movies have been going recently. Came out in 2014. Action movie stars Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise, Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Love that I have not movie. seen that. I loved it. Oh, Kyle, you need to watch that tomorrow. You'll love it. Isn't that the one like Live, Die, Repeat? It, yes. Wasn't that the original name? Yes. It's, it's it was a phenomenal awesome. movie. Yeah. It's it was really. Awesome. Awesome. I thought it was going to be it's, junk or at best like a seven. It's a great no. movie. I, I would give it probably like a nine. It was awesome. Seriously, it's, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> awesome. Good. Okay, if it was right. one, a really enjoyable action movie. It if you fired can, on all cylinders. If you can get it on 4K, watch it in 4K. Too. Yeah. Honest. I'm looking it up right now because I haven't seen. I only saw that in it's theaters. Got once. a little bit of you know comic relief here and there. Tom Cruise oh. is great, but for the most part, just nonstop action. I thought it was hilarious. Keeps you thinking. <laughs> yeah, like it was. It was good. There's so many great scenes where he just starts dying. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah, awesome. Like his character his character development and everything is just really fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was it was sweet. Uh it's sold out on Best Buy. It's usually five bucks on Blu-ray. That's crazy. Number four, been mentioned on the pod many times is one of my favorite movies. It is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, as Jamie would pronounce Such- it. Such a great movie. Mm-hmm. We're talking the 2011 English one, although I do like the, was it Swedish ones? We've yeah. got a lot of Swedish references tonight. Yeah. I do like those as well, but I loved uh, Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig. Yep. Uh, this, I think this was a very underrated film, and I wish they would have completed the series. Didn't we talk uh, about this, with, with that team. I think we have many times, yeah. probably in person and on the pod, so yeah. I won't. Won't overdo it here, but check it out if you haven't yet. Great mystery film. Oh, God. It's amazing. And honestly, if a lot of people, you know, talk about the book versus movie, a lot of people always say book better than movie. I read them. I read. I saw the movie and I loved it so much. That, and as you guys know, I don't read a whole lot. I sat down and read that book in like three separate sittings. And um, it follows the book so closely. Yeah. There's only a few things that are different that aren't even necessary in the book. So the experience oh. is amazing. 
It's such a good movie. Yeah, very underrated film. Don't, I didn't even know it was underrated. Don't listen to reviews. <laughs> yeah, I think it doesn't <laughs> have very good reviews. It didn't it do really that's well? bullshit, because it's a great movie. It didn't do very well. That's why they didn't make the sequels. But, really? Uh, yeah. I thought it was because he wanted more money. I don't think so. Who, Daniel Craig? That dick. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, number three, I just watched this one. Uh, slam dunk of a movie. This one falls probably in like my top ten all time. We're in that terrain now. Uh, came out in 2016. Was a heist movie. I'm big into heist movies, and this this might be my favorite. Hell or High Water. Stars oh. Chris Pine. Uh, uh, I don't know that one. Uh, Josh Bridges and uh, Ben Foster. You ever seen that one, Zach? Oh, that's that's good. I, I, I'm, I thought you were going to say Hurricane Heist, and I was like, I haven't seen it. Pump the brakes here, buddy. Let's pump the brakes. <laughs> Hell or high water. I haven't seen it, but I just uh, it's really good. Ben Foster, phenomenal performance. Yeah. That guy is consistently an underappreciated actor. Uh, Chris Pine, like, totally just flew onto my radar out of left field. Like, did not realize he had it in him. And uh, Josh Bridges. Why is that? Is that that's his name, right? Jeff Jeff, Jeff, Bridges. Jeff Bridges. I was gonna say that. I was like, I couldn't. I've been doing pretty good from memory here. Uh, Jeff Josh Bridges. Bridges. Uh, Josh Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Uh, I was like, trem- tremendous performance. <laughs> like the the writing was so good in this movie. I loved the little interactions they had with the various people around uh, middle of nowhere, Texas. Um, just so fun. Loved everything about it. Uh, ultimately, a serious film, but had everything going for it. Uh, great ending as well, but Only uh, performances for four of Oscars, huh? Yeah, performances of a lifetime for for several of those guys. Um, number two, my other Nolan film on the list. Watched it this year and jumped to number one for me among Nolan films. Twenty fourteen, Interstellar. Oh yeah, yep. Same with it's a me. great movie. I saw it for the first time this past year, too, and I've already watched it like four times. <laughs> really? I thought you'd seen that. I I, Alex used to talk about that movie all the time. Yeah. I had watched it. Uh, might have been like four years ago. I did watch like some of it, but I was pretty intoxicated, so I didn't really remember most of it. So, uh, well, yeah. so yeah, inventive. So inventive. Uh little bit of a clumsier ending uh, I, I don't the, the the interaction of him with his daughter well, I don't want to spoil too much of the movie here but uh, the ultimate payoff a little a little weak which keeps it out of the number one slot but overall just tremendous performance from Matthew McConaughey Jessica Chastain uh, loved it loved it just Christopher Nolan's best in my opinion easily as best uh, very creative film uh, and then number one also watched relatively relatively recently loved the commitment from the actor who pour, had to have just poured so much effort and practice into making this role work 2014 it's, vengeance. it's whiplash miles teller oh, and jk simmons miles such teller a good movie learned the drums to to perform in this movie and ultimately just performance of a lifetime for him i would say Incredible movie, many many awards uh, garnered, but uh, so glad I I, I watched it. Um, just could not like could not uh, take my eyes away from the screen. The music was incredible. The acting was phenomenal. Uh, really intense. You want to talk about a movie that had like intensity and suspense, but had like no like m- monsters. Like I guess you could make an argument that J.K. Simmons was a monster, but it just kept me l- literally on like the edge of my seat, like just poised, just staring. And I think even I was by myself watching this movie when it wrapped up. I was like, "That was awesome." I said it to myself, like that was amazing. <laughs> I gotta watch it. I never saw it. Really? Phenomenal oh, it's I, I, it is well worth it. I need it. to see apparently Whiplash and Sound of Metal because Sound of Metal is supposed to be really good too. That's a newer one. Yeah, I want to check that one out. Yeah, too. Uh, about- I forgot my real fast. My honorable mentions: uh, Baby Driver, Bl- uh, Blade That's Runner, good. Get Out, Ex Machina, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Django yeah. Unchained. Damn, Ben. Django Unchained is I, probably my favorite all-time movie. I would say I hit 95% of, this, of the movies you just said. I agree with almost everything, other than the ones I haven't seen. So I need to see them. But awesome. Well, that's good, good to hear because it good was, list. once again, an authoritative, authoritative list. So it is correct answers. Those are the top 10 movies. There it is. 
Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I gotta check something My top out. ten <laughs> of the past ten years. Thank I think it's 2009. For, uh, uh, it's 2009. Never, you're okay. You slipped <clears throat> under the radar. You watch what snakes, on a, snakes on a Plane? Z- zombie Land? Oh. Oh. Snakes on a Plane. Zombie snakes land. on a Plane is fucking great. All right? Oh, it is. I like Snakes on a Plane. You go... That movie... Man. I could... I own that one. Oh, it's... I love it so great. much. I... You just... You have the lowest expectations, mm-hmm. and then you see it, and you're like, this is serviceable, and then you're like, but it's so much fun. Yeah. And Samuel is so good. It's so it. much fun. When she whips that dog and the snake eats it, it's the, oh, no, the guy did. The guy did. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's crazy, man. Great. Snakes on crack. You're like, damn it. <laughs> All right. Good list, Brom. Not perfect, but apparently it's authoritative, no, it per- so we can't perfect. really. Okay. All right. Well, it's perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Zach. Don't ask gonna... me. Don't at me. Or You're going to bring us home? at me at Beta Investments. Thank you. Yeah. Follow you said, and subscribe. I'm, bring, I'm bringing up the rear. Do, 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 Zach Facts, it's Zach Facts. When you're going down, get some Zach Facts. When you're going down. Bring it home, baby. We are well over an hour. Boom, bam, boom. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not even going to toy around with over under. Um, I'm going to be real blunt here. Got two facts for you. Two facts. <gasps> two facts because I was so engrossed with this excellent film. Let me see. I'll say that. That's underwater. Fact. Brown's throwing up in his mouth right now. <laughs> Oh, okay. John, John's the one with the uh, vomit on his soundboard. Vomit on the sweater. Okay. Um, let's get going. Um, okay. Fact uno. Apparently, there's a fake blood shortage while filming. So the director received a tremendous donation from a local animal shelter. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> so there was some Scream. gore in this movie. There's some serious gore. Yeah, there was. Chunks of people floating Dude, around. It was intense. People, yeah. yeah, blowing up, imploding. It was good. Again, I, when, I uh, like when, it was good. When TJ Miller literally exploded, I was like, what the fuck just happened? He gets ripped out like his head, his neck breaks and he gets ripped through it and then just blood. And it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. And uh, Mamadou, like just chunks of Mamadou floating through the water. Yep. It was, was crazy. That one chick was just freaking out, screaming bloody murder. Fact number two. Um, the water used in the film Underwater was not purified, so the cast had to drink from store-bought water bottles. Oh. Uh, which brand? Aquafina. So, not that great. Mm. Wow. They were really rough in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't get the... um. The Fiji, um, Fiji, no, the no, smart couldn't water. afford Fiji. Smart water, couldn't, couldn't, Voss. Couldn't smart, <clears throat> could, could not do Voss. <laughs> Drink. Um, aqua what is fina. with those? Glosso, <laughs> gl- 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 I don't get it. I don't get those waters. You drink it, Kyle. That's what to get about it. You drink water. <laughs> hey man, Dasani oh, gets okay. me sick. All right, there's there, there's differences. I don't drink Dasani either. I don't like Dasani. It's the worst. Really. Oh yeah, Dasani. I used grows. to drink canned, canned Dasani. What? Can, you get you get water? That's the wrong answer. In a can, or maybe it was Deja Blue. No, it was Deja Blue. Sorry, oh, it was Deja okay. Blue in a can. So good. You ever? I see don't that, know what uh, it is, but it's so much better from a can. You ever see that uh, Liquid Death or whatever it's called? It's got like a skull on the on the front of it, but it's just mm. purified water. Hmm. It's like a really weird marketing, but they got us talking about it. So free marketing to them. So maybe that was the strategy. Damn it! Shoot, just edit that part out, Kyle. Thank you for listening to Submersion. Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. 
If you like what you heard, please leave us a rating wherever you listen. Want to interact with us? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also love to get messages from all of you. If you have a suggestion, a comment, or just anything you'd like to share, please email us at maceaststudios at gmail.com. 